Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this video is a bit of a follow-up to uh, the video from two weeks ago where I used the noise bridge and the tiny SA to, uh, to have a look uh, if we could get some meaning from results from a, from a filter uh, and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use the same uh, RF board I'm going to use the same noise filter I'm going to attach it to my bench spectrum analyzer which is a Siglent uh, and we're going to have a look at that and I'm doing this this is definitely a beginners how to use a spectrum analyzer video I guess because one of the things that's really good about the spectrum analyzer I've got is that it's lots and lots of facilities well beyond uh, my complete understanding uh, but part of the problem with that of course is with with um, those facilities comes complexity and if you aren't careful it's possible to uh, struggle to get meaningful results so hopefully what you'll see in this video is me uh, using the settings to turn a trace that appears meaningless into one that is hopefully meaningful so hope it helps let's go to the bench and make a start okay so here we are with the uh, SSA 3021X setup uh, and I've got um, the noise bridge here it's not powered up at the moment just fed into uh, the RF input not making any use of the of the tracking generator this is just for a uh, if you've got the ability to um, look at a spectrum whether you've got a tracking generator or not hopefully um, this will be some use to you so let's first of all have a look um, what the noise bridge will actually do. Now I've got this set between 9 megahertz and 12 and a half megahertz so if I switch on the track the uh, noise bridge now like that uh, I'm going to switch off again you can see there is a, a change in noise floor probably well not a lot but you can see this, um, that it goes up there while it's on and drops back down when it's off so that's on off on off so um, let's now uh, see if we can make use of that again using the RF demo board so I'm going to get set up now uh, with the uh, band pass filter here 10.7 megahertz one which is suitable for this frequency range and let's let's see what we've got okay so now I've got the um, RF demo kit uh, board uh, in circuit here so I'm using the bandpass filter there 10.7 megs it says on there got the one side of the filter to the input the other side to the noise bridge so let's um, other than that the settings are unchanged from uh, from just now when we connected the noise bridge directly so let's switch the noise bridge on so that's on that's off on off so there appears to be um, no appreciable change whatsoever now I think if you've um, you're new to this there's already an awful lot of buttons on here and if you're a spectrum analyzer expert you'll be all over the keypad now doing clever stuff but if you're not you've got to start somewhere so so what's going on um, well clearly um, the difference between uh, on and off is not not apparent on here for some reason when it was before so clearly there's loss well, there seems to be loss in the filter uh, not not just the and if you think about it it's a band pass filter so yeah th there should be some loss that's the whole point of it so what we need to do is is to carefully increase the sensitivity of the spectrum analyzer now if we go to the amplitude button here uh, we've got 20 db of attenuation in there so let's just carefully remove some of that i say carefully because we don't want to overload the input of our of our spectrum analyzer that's not good at all um, so let's just wind back the attenuation a bit that's that's uh, 10 db still can't see much and that's 0 db now, i don't know about you but i can see something there now so that's clearly uh it is showing a difference let's just switch on yep there we go so when we switch on the noise generator we are getting something now so clearly um, the attenuation uh, needed to be changed a little bit you have to obviously have to be careful with that so let's now try adjusting the 
scale per division. We're at 10 dB. Let's try to reduce that. So that's 9. You can see it's vanishing off the scale. I'm going to go down to 5 and it's vanished off the scale. So if we then choose reference level and uh, wind the reference level back up to somewhere we can actually see. Yeah, we definitely have got something going on there. and It is about 10.7 meg, something like that. So let's just go back to scale per division and let's change that to let's go to 1 dB and I'm going to obviously have to adjust the, the reference level again to bring it up and suddenly we're starting to see something now that's um, very chaotic but there clearly is something going on so th there's a number of things we can do here um, so one of the first is obviously this is a noise generator it's randomly producing noise and the spectrum analyzer is doing its level best to plot every point and of course they're changing each time so let's set up um, let's go to the trace menu we're on uh, what signal and light to call clear right so let's let's change that to an average of 100 so what it's now doing is it's just past 50 there approaching 80 now so that's the average of 100 sweeps and it will keep on averaging now and suddenly we can see the shape of our filter which is very pleasant so I'm going to go back to amplitude and I'm going to just tweak the reference level a bit so we can actually see it so that looks a little bit more like the kind of thing you'd expect. Something else we can do is we can go to bandwidth. Currently we've got a bandwidth of 30 kilohertz. So if I change that to 10 kilohertz, again I'm going to have to go back to amplitude and I'm going to have to tweak the setting. But you can see now we're starting to, to clear up the display somewhat. So we've gone from nothing at all when you switched it on to uh, a display that um, that looks uh, something like shall we say shall we say so well, another, something else if we wanted to really examine the shape of the filter now we could go back now to frequency and we could choose a start frequency of let's choose um, uh, a 10 megahertz and let's get a stop frequency of 11.5 megahertz and it's doing its averaging now just past 70 averages there and we can we can very easily see here there's there's about 10.7 megs so the band uh, pass filter is indeed doing its job and we've managed to turn what appeared to be nothing on the display into something that's actually making some sense and I, I think the comment I made in the previous video about the tiny SA is, is, is even more applicable here. This is so versatile and a lot of the things that this machine does I don't understand. Well, let's not pretend I'm not an expert. But it took me a while to realise that you actually have to work quite hard at getting meaningful uh, results from these machines. It doesn't, it doesn't just pop out. Um, so I think that, that's, um, that's quite important. Now... Um, this machine does have the ability to auto-tune. I've rebooted the machine so it is exactly as it it comes when switched on so it starts with uh, the, the full sweep to 2.1 gigahertz. I've got nothing is changed with the setup noise bridge filter still in line so I'm just going to press auto-tune and see what uh, the spectrum analyzer makes of that. So it's a work in a way and there's your answer now I don't know about you but that isn't telling me very much it's centered on 1.8 gigahertz uh, and it's clearly found something it's probably some spewy eye from somewhere I don't know but that isn't uh, obviously the kind of thing that we're looking for and I think the point is although it, it's you know quite often the auto tune on an oscilloscope works very well but in my experience it doesn't work so well on here we have to uh, do the manual setting thing so let's just I'm just going to reconfigure it and we'll just have a look at the the 6.5 megahertz band stop filter so I'll be back uh, when I've done that okay I'm back now I've got the 
the band stop filter uh, in circuit 6.5 meg I've changed the span here it starts at 5 stops at 8 um, with a center at 6.5 and because the previous filter was a was a band pass filter uh, there was a lot of attenuation uh, when we turn on the noise source this time that's so there's a lot of noise passing through now and instantly we get a change and we can actually see there is attenuation going on there so uh, here we've actually got uh, a semi-meaningful result uh, almost straight away uh, we're still on uh, settings are the same apart from uh, previous we've we have got a scale of 3 dB per division if I change that to the default of 10 which is what you would have seen before uh, you can still see it but it's nowhere where near as it's pronounced so we'll go back to that uh, 3D per division move the line up so you can see it whoops apologies got a bit uh, carried away there with the, um, the control uh, so if we change bandwidth to 10 kilohertz um, again that's showing it up a little bit better uh, obviously as you increase the bandwidth you yeah, you get a, a increase in resolution but the sweep time does slow down because you are uh, asking the um, spectrum analyzer to do a, a great deal more work so um, there's the joggly line let's go back to uh, trace and let's ask it for average of 100 and I mean it doesn't need to be 100 we could for instance there have an average of say 20 so that's an average of 20 even an average of 20 um, shows up uh, the free filter characteristics uh, very nicely uh, it doesn't like um, the amount of um, energy I'm giving it really so I'm just going to up the attenuator a little bit just to stop the beeping it doesn't affect the, the trace too much so hopefully you can see there are some occasions where uh, yeah okay we can we can get to see it um, but there are other occasions where you may not and one of the beauties of this little board of course is um, it's giving you some some real live, live examples to to play with so there you go um, lots of facilities and lots of very clever features brilliant but for a beginner which I was when I bought this uh, bewildering is probably the best word and if you're going to use this with your own circuits um, you need to practice you need to get your head around what's going on because uh, and this board is actually that's why I think it's so useful because it allows you to do that practice and it allows you to get familiar um, with the instrument so there we go okay well hope Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed watching me playing with the spectrum analyzer there and the and the noise bridge. Um, I, I actually think it's enormously useful to to get to use your test equipment like that because it gives you lots of practice. And when you have got a real life circuit whose characteristics you don't know, in other words, you haven't got a nice little drawn out graph um, that you'd hopefully expect to see. Uh, when you're trying to discover something, it's handy to, to know your way around some of those settings. So I'd encourage you to practice and do that. And uh, as I say, I bought this board. I didn't wasn't a, in any way sponsored or given to me. I bought it because I wanted to, to use it to, um, for that kind of thing. It's meant for the Nano VNA, but works just fine on the um, Tiny SA and the normal spectrum analyzer as well. So what I'm probably going to do is make use of the same board in the next video when I'm going to uh, get the tracking generator working with the spectrum analyzer. So thanks very much for watching. If you've liked it, please click the thumbs up. That really helps. It'd be great if you could subscribe. It costs nothing and helps the channel. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.